seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were parched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produce grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Scholars tell us that the way in which you have to look at a parable is to find out what's strange or odd about it. Is there anything odd or strange about this parable that would not be the normal kind of thing? Let me tell you what I think it is. I think, though I'm not a farmer, that any farmer would really know his land. He'd know where the, the, the parched parts are, where the soil is hard, like, just like pavement. He'd know where the, the rocks were. He'd, he'd know where the, the parched ground was, where, where the soil was really, really poor. Any good farmer would know the makeup of his land. And so any good farmer would know where to plant the seed and where not to plant the seed. A good farmer isn't going to throw the seed on the pavement. He knows it's not going to grow. He's not going to put it on the parched ground because he knows it's, it's just going to be withered away. Why would you put seed into a pile of rocks. Seed costs money. And no good farmer is going to waste his money by throwing away the seed. And I expect that that's what the people of Jesus' day, who were all very, very familiar with farming, what they were thinking. That's what would have caught their attention. And I can just hear them say, but seed is expensive. You don't waste the seed. This sower is foolish just tossing it wherever. This sower is wasteful. He scatters it everywhere. He throws it on the path. He throws it on the rocky ground. He throws it where only weeds are going to grow. He, he scatters it everywhere. He's so generous with the seed that he's at the point of being wasteful. And Jesus says, that's what God is like. He's generous in his sowing. He's extravagant in planting his seed. To some, it may actually appear that he is wasteful. Now, why would God do that? I think the first reason is because God wants everybody to be saved. That desire of his was revealed the moment that his creation fell into sin. It was then that he promised a savior, a promise that was repeated over and over again through the prophets until the time was just right. And then at that moment, he sent his one and only son. And now that he sent him into the world, and, and now that he placed upon him the sin of the whole world, and, and he died for it, He's not going to take the chance of missing anybody by restricting where the seed, where this good news of Jesus is being scattered. He doesn't want to miss a single person with that information. He's extravagant. After all, we could be wrong about the soil. After all, we could misjudge the depth of the soil and think that it's not going to grow here, but maybe it will. And so God says to his sowers, that's to his church, that's to pastors, that's to missionaries, and that's to all of you. He says, I want you to be generous in sowing. I want you to scatter that word wherever you are. I want you to be liberal in tossing it away. And don't worry about where it lands. If it lands on the pavement, so what? If it lands on rocky ground, so what? What? If it lands on, on weedy, a, a weedy patch, don't worry about it. It's not your problem. It's my problem. 
After all, you don't make that seed to grow anyway. I do. You just toss it out there and let me do the rest. Do you think the church needs to hear that message? I think it does. Because I think we tend to restrict the sowing to certain types of people. We prejudge people and we say, oh, they're really not going to be interested. Or they're, they're just too secular. Or, or they're not religious enough. Why would they want to even hear about it? Oh, they're just too immoral. How could we share this message with them? Or maybe even some would say, but they're not our kind of people. We wouldn't want them here with us. But more important than that, is that I think we need to hear it because we misunderstand how powerful the Word of God is and just what it can do in our lives and in the lives of other people. And that's what that first lesson for today teaches us. It teaches us that God's Word is like the rain that comes down from heaven. It always does something. It always carries out God's will. Maybe a blessing, maybe a judgment, but that's what God's word is like. It is powerful and it produces something. It always accomplishes God's purpose. And that's important for us to know and to remember because all of these different kinds of soils that are described here are soils that are not just out there in other people, but we find all those kinds of soils within our own heart. I think sometimes that there are areas within our heart that are hard like pavement. Maybe somebody has hurt us or they, they, they insulted us in such a way that, that a, a crust has formed over that part of our heart. And we, we may come to church and say, and forgive us our trespasses as we, and then we pause for a moment and say, but not pray. Not pray. I can't forgive him for that. And so in our minds, we don't let God's seed of forgiveness get rooted in us. And then Satan comes and steals that seed away and, and he sows his own kind of seeds in our heart. Seeds of revenge and hate. And who does that destroy? It only destroys us. Is that kind of soil in your heart? God's seed can change it. <clears throat> or what about rocky soil? Here the, the soil, the, the seed germinates quickly but it has no roots. And then hardships and trials and difficulties come into life and, and it begins to wither. And more often than not, this kind of soil is created in people's hearts right within the church because of what I would refer to as sloppy preaching and teaching. The evangelist who says, believe in Jesus and all your problems will be solved. Your children are going to be perfect. Your bank account is going to serve, and your marriage is going to be a perpetual honeymoon. But then when the trials and difficulties come, then our faith is tested, and it begins to shrivel, and we can lose hope. I remind you today, God hasn't promised you a rose garden in this world. That great day is going to come. The day of glory is going to come. But in this world, he reminds us and says, you're going to face trouble. Well, all of these kinds of soils are in our heart. And, and the sower keeps sowing. He's generous in sowing that seed into our heart. And his seed produces a miracle. It can change our heart. It can change rocky soil into good loam. Rocky soil, hardened ground, thorn-infested patches, changed by the miracle of his generosity, changed into rich soil that produces a thousandfold. Let that miracle of God's word happen in you. and Let it happen in others 
Be generous in your sowing like God is generous. Sow the seed. Be extravagant. Even be called wasteful. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds centered in Christ Jesus. Amen.